Hi everybody, welcome to Nifilmism. I'm Drew. I'm Ryan. And today we're going to talk about ever-declining quality <laughs> in this <laughs> Game of Thrones. Oh. Uh, we, did, we, did, we did an episode before this season. But yeah. Because there's been... It seems we had like a year e- and a half in between. It seems like eons between. Where we talked about the differences in, you know, show versus book. Yeah. I've, never re- I've never read. I have. I won't until he finishes the series. That's my stand. That's my soapbox. I'll stand that. Unless he wheel of times this shit and just dies before finishing. Oh god! And then you get just ghost written books. I, I hope not. I, I'm okay, I'm actually okay with where the books are. And even if he if he was if I wake up tomorrow and they say George Martin uh, died and didn't finish the books, I have really liked the books to where they are. Yeah. And I'm almost afraid of him Stephen Kinging the ending, like you know Ooh. the Dark Tower or yeah. one of those. But that's neither here nor there. We're here to talk about the show. Because this past weekend, the Battle of Winterfell aired. And uh, there there were a lot of people who loved it. And I am... I'm really struggling to figure out why. (laughs) Don't get off the dragon! Why are you getting off the dragon? Can I just address something first? That at any time I have a criticism of a show and people come back and say, it's a show with magic and dragons. Fuck you. Yes. <laughs> Fuck you. I've invested <laughs> my interest and in time into this. Fuck you for diminishing that from the outside. I, I, I hate people who are like that. And, and I say that, I, I don't mean, look, if, if you love this show, I get it. It's something that you enjoy and you want more of it. And I am not going to fault you for that. However, I would ask you to really go back and take a look at the rules of the universe of this show. Because what consistency is a huge thing. Gotham. Gotham is a show that is crazy and off the wall. And if they put in something super serious or all of a sudden did an episode that felt like the Dark Knight, I love the Dark Knight. We did two episodes on it. Yes. I would complain that Gotham went in that direction because it's inconsistent with the tone of the show. There are rules that people have set up, and all I ask of a writing team is to at least know what they already wrote or what someone else wrote before them it, and keep it in line. To keep it simpler, it feels like you were watching like Heat, and then suddenly in like the back half of the escape shootout scene... People are able to gun kata. That's a wow. You just went full equilibrium. Yeah. That's yeah. It, it the show has become the McDonald's version of the show. And the show was pretty good early on, but it's 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 what it wasn't supposed to be at this point. The first three seasons, George R. R. Martin was part of the staff. He wrote some of the episodes, he was constantly consulting. And he had a a bit more of a hand in the creation of it. That's why after season three ends, uh, that's Red Wedding era. Yeah. At that point, you start to see the show's slow decline and then nosedives after they leave the source material. It gets far more predictable. Uh, You've got all of these characters who, if you read the books or if you just watch the first few seasons, you can see that they have a clear uh, thematic purpose in mind. Arya is supposed to be the the girl who's bucking the patriarchy. And that is that is her purpose in there. And they do a great job of that for the first couple of seasons. Her with her sword lessons and telling Ned that she doesn't want to be sewing and all that. And Ned's subtle pushback, but subtle... Um, um, what's the word I'm looking Every for? Essence. Yeah, yeah. It, it, so... That's her character. That's what she's supposed to be. George Martin loves this kind of character. He writes about that kind of character in almost everything he's ever written. She's not supposed to be Wolverine. (laughs) I'm stealing. (laughs) I'm not the first person on the internet, of course, to refer to her as Wolverine. People started calling her that after she got stabbed in Bravos and didn't die for some reason, despite falling into that shit filled water. Uh, (laughs) And then all of a sudden is just this insane killer. With no repercussions yet. Which None. I'm pretty sure is going to happen. And she, Well, the, 
should happen, but I don't know if narratively they're going to do anything. Is they refuse to kill off anybody at this show anymore. We're going to get back to that in a second. But oh, overnight, they went from having Arya as somebody who was trying to figure out how to live in the world but still maintain some of their own morals, which is why she has such trouble becoming a faceless man. But then, as soon as she leaves, this is where I really lost it, because the whole arc of her becoming a faceless man... Is that she has was, to lose her identity. Which she can't do. Yeah, but then she's literally but almost as brand she, tier of, I don't have an identity, when she's back. As soon as she leaves. Yeah. Right. And now they're trying to make you care about this sociopath, and it's not the character that you had in the early seasons, and her arc didn't make any sense. On to the battle itself, though. You know what I did the day after? What? I watched the Two Towers. Just to see how... Helm's Deep. Be, just going to see, hey, you can actually shoot something that happens at night and be able to see it? They shot 75% of Helm's Deep in actual rain at night. I don't have any pro. I didn't have any problems seeing things, and I think it was... I think it was a budgetary thing, and I think it was also... I don't know if I want to give the show at this point in a stage a directorial decision of the unseen and not being able to see what's coming. But I didn't have a problem with following what was going on. I just had a problem with what was going on. There, it was a mess. If you look at it from the standpoint of, like, if you watch this side by side with Helm's Deep, you have a clear scene with Aragorn, a clear scene with Gimli, a clear shot of the uruk -hai, And it's one little thing after another that gives you something to care about. There were too many shots in this that were just what is going on. There's people fighting. Um, we I had to pause it at one point because someone that I was watching it with asked, wait a minute, was that was that Jamie? They did they kill Jamie? And I I I don't I can't be sure. It'd be kind of weird if they killed him in that quick of a scene. I, mean, I guess it looked kind of like him, but I don't think it was him. Is, is, is that, the, that, is that the, this is how this universe was supposed to work? That I, you get you would get abrupt endings? But now the show has just become traditional fantasy fare that you don't get abrupt endings for main characters anymore? This show has become the Lord of the Rings in the worst way possible. I love the Lord of the Rings, but Lord of the Rings is classic fantasy. It's good versus yeah. evil. This show made its mark just by being something where all the characters are gray. It's kind of like the wire in that. So all the characters are gray. And nobody was safe because that's realistic. And I, I get it. You have actors with contracts. And there are practical decisions that don't allow you to have the freedom of, say, writing a book and killing a character whenever you want to. Yeah. But you get to the point where there's, there's plot armor that takes away from any suspense. Watching this, I found myself thinking of um, Captain America Civil War. The oh, whole airport scene, you knew none of these characters were yeah. in danger. And yeah, they're being saved for something bigger later. Yeah. Uh, and then, so by the very end, when you start seeing characters on top of a pile of bodies and, oh, things are going bad, they might lose, but there's Sam, he's still alive, and there's so-and-so, yeah. they're still alive. Okay, I, I now know by this point in the episode, you're not going to keep them alive this long and show them here as you get to the climax of the episode, only to turn around and kill them in the last 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah that, was, that was just the over... Like, it's... It's... it's The episode was, like, the best distillation of, like we said, like, it's become traditional fantasy in that your named characters are pretty well-protected, despite overwhelming odds against that. Yeah. Uh, and... I'm going to watch the end of it, but do you do you really care at this point? I don't mind Game of Thrones. I'm, I'm not a diehard. I, it's, it's, it's the only fantasy thing that I actually care about. I like Lord of the Rings because it's, you know, it's, it's digestible. This is the only long form fantasy thing that I've ever invested anything into. And it was at first because it was a subversion of that. I know everybody makes, oh, subversion of expectations, but no, it was like something wearing the sheep's clothing of fan of high fa of high fantasy but actually being something completely, completely different yes. different but at this point I, I, at this point you're you're in bed with it so you're just gonna roll over and wait till the dawn <laughs> did did you cringe when Arya came out of nowhere 
and stab the Night King. It was so telegraphed because of just the way this episode... A wild Missandei, or a wild uh, Melisandre appears. Yeah. She apparently has been studying fire magic. Her fire magic is plus 10 now. <laughs> I... Which, oh, like, yeah, speaking of Melisandre, I, I just want to throw out there that they had an entire episode when she's talking with Queen Selyse, not long before they burn um, uh, Shireen. Yeah. Where, I think it's the episode where eventually you see her take off the necklace and she's an old woman. Yeah. But she talks to Queen Selyse about how most of what she does isn't magic, it's actually, oh, I use this powder and this whatever. Yeah, it's, it's and it's like, all... Alchemy. Right, alchemy, it, but it's not actual magic. It's, I'm going to use this powder to make smoke, and that's going to scare the superstitious. And nope, it's all real magic. But, right, but why would you make up your mind? Seriously, make up your mind on what you want this show to be. Because if you're going to if you're gonna put an entire scene in where she's talking about how her magic isn't real, only to have her come back and light the whole trench on fire and light all the swords. Like, I get the narrative function of the swords being on fire because it allowed you to see what was going on yes, down the battlefield. Yeah. As dumb as that charge was, I understand it's because they get rid of the Dothraki, which as you're wrapping up the season, yeah. what do you do with them? Yeah. So, but there's so, it's so devoid of logic. Yeah. It, like, which was originally what the series is built on was, Right. Characters acting logically to achieve their goals. If this was a show that from the first season had that sort of ridiculous stuff and it was campy and tropey, but still fairly well acted, I would still watch it and I would not be complaining right now. I mean, I might have my minor but, quibbles. But just the way that they hoodwinked you after, after you were really in. Yes. Yeah. And that was largely because George left. Because he's got to finish this damn book. <laughs> I don't know. But now that the the big threat is over, well, there's two things they can well, do. Well, the thing, too, was... Well, what did I see? I think I saw it on Reddit somewhere. Where somebody really just succinctly was like, you ended this threat so decisively and quickly that nobody's ever going to believe it was a threat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, it's just going to always be a northern superstition. That, like, only the Northerners that survive are ever going to remember. And it's, like, it completely eliminates that this was the real threat all along. But the the prologue of the pilot was introducing this threat. And you get it all the way to the end, and you go full Phantom Menace, kill the droid ship? Yeah. It, it's a trope that's been done over and over again. How do you reconcile the execution of the main character, Ned Stark, in season one with knocking out the droid ship <laughs> in <laughs> when you get into the 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 the, fin the finality of the, the entire show. And, and you know what? There, there's still a possibility. I'm, I'm open to the idea that maybe they did this to piss people like me off and that they actually have something else clever up their sleeve. It's certainly possible that there's some other twist that's still coming because I refuse to believe that the last three episodes is just a war between what's left of the Northerners, maybe a fight between John and Danny over who gets the throne and fighting Cersei. Yeah. But it, at this point, that is far too mundane. And I, I like, I'd like to think that the writers know that's too mundane and that there's still something coming that we haven't seen. Because they could, in theory, wrap up a fight for King's Landing in one episode. Yeah. We have three episodes left and almost an hour and a half each. So I do think that there is going to be another twist. And that maybe the, the easy demise of the Night King was not quite what it seemed to be. But at the moment, just coming off this episode, if this was supposed to be it, the big whatever that this all led up to... It, it's a bit of a letdown. I've seen Lord of the Rings. I know what happens when you throw the ring into yeah. it in, in Mountain Doom. Yeah. Yeah. Everything falls apart. I get it. But I've seen it. And like you said, this all started on subverting those tropes. It, it, it seems like D&D, &D, like, 
mistook that the Iron Throne wasn't the real goal. It was literally saving mankind. <laughs> that the Iron Throne was the bauble, and now they're like, oh no, the Iron Throne is the goal. Like, no! And how do you reconcile that with a break-the-wheel speech? It's, oh, God. If the whole plot of this is, hey, let's break the wheel, but to break the wheel, that means I'm just going to sit on the throne I'm like gonna everyone use, I'm else. I'm my, my legitimate noble claim right that shouldn't exist there are still a lot of very neat things that can be done in terms of theme with this show you can do something like they've already brought this up many times especially with the conversations between john and daenerys like okay well i'm expe i expect to have the throne because of my birthright however i also don't want you to judge me based on the actions of my predecessors my my forebears yeah. Okay, so which one is it? And that really gets into real-world things, too. When you're talking about real-world issues like reparations for things like slavery, and there is a question to be asked there, okay, how much, how much pride should I be taking, if any? How much credit should I be taking for the actions of my ancestors but how much blame should I have for what they've done? And that seems to be the question that they were setting up over the last couple of seasons. And if they just answer that successfully, I'll consider the show to have at least done something right in the end. Thoughts on that? I don't, I don't know. Like I said, it's just getting too traditional and predictable. Like I have a feel like, like as soon as, as soon as John found out, I'm just like, oh, this is just, we need to pad out in episodes that there's tension between these two characters that obviously aren't going to have tension because they love each other. And I'm just like, okay, so are we going to have a, a, a one of the last episodes going to be 45 minutes of us thinking something's going to happen? But no, it's not going to happen because this is, this is TV Game of Thrones. <laughs> this is also a feudalistic monarchy. And you know what happens in feudalistic monarchies? People get married to solve disputes and join houses. Yeah. Oh, okay. They both sort of have a claim. Look at every fight between the English and the French. Usually things could be avoided by marrying two people together and combining those houses. Yeah. Cool. They can get married and avoid the whole thing. It's really a non-issue. Exactly. It's, but like, I, it's like you talk to people like who are like super diehard in the show and they're like, oh, is that going to be solved? It's like they're, they're going to get married. But if they do that... People in a world like this that actually care about each other and the political marriage makes complete sense too. But if they do that, how do you reconcile it with the entire theme of breaking the wheel? I think they're just gonna ignore it entirely. And, and that's been really the the underlying issue. No, with you're the gonna show. have stupid stuff like, oh, Tormund, you could have one of the northern castles, even though you're a wildling. Oh, um, we're gonna give Grey Worm and Miss Sande something, even though you're not nobles, you're literally slave. Well, I'm I'm actually okay with someone like Tormund doing that. Um, just a quick historical aside. After the Roman Civil War, Julius Caesar had made a ton of promises to the Gauls and gave them citizenship, and he needed senators because so many senators had either died or retired during the Civil War. So one of the things he did was take these people, they they, they were from Gaul, but they dressed like Romans. They they spoke Latin, they had Roman educations, yeah, they were living yeah. under a whole Roman system, and he made some of them senators. And, okay, cool. There were still people in Rome who, draw whatever current political parallels you would like, were saying, ah, oh, the, the Gauls are at the gates, and they have yeah. face tattoos, and they're dressed like Gauls, and they shouldn't be in the Senate. And they walk in, and, oh... They're, they're just like us. If, yeah. if we didn't know any better, no. I, th I yeah. think that's. I think that kind of superficial, like easy stuff, is how they're going to do that. But there's, it has so much more potential. I know there's only three episodes left. It's tough to introduce new themes. Or they could do something like have her just melt the throne. Yeah, but she wants the throne. But it would be a subversion of expectations if she melted the throne. I think that's what's going to happen now. <laughs> I'm th I'm thinking of what they're thinking is going to get people clicking on videos, and I think it's going to be that kind of stuff. Is that what this has turned into? I think it is. I think it's. I think it's. However, they can get reactions at this point. Do you think George is just sitting back and laughing and saying, 
well, you fucked this up. I'm glad people will have something good to read when I finish this. I think people like you are hoping that's what's happening, is that he's he's got a plan that's entirely separate so that they could be divergent universes, that if you really like the characters and property, you've got two entirely alternate and, and valid ways to experience it. it. Having read, or at least being familiar with most of George's works, um... I'm fairly comfortable in saying that when you see themes diverging after seasons three and four, that that was the moment that I knew that it wasn't going to be the same as the books. It's got to be different because the themes that he's already established going right through the stabbing of Jon Snow versus the the way they started to take things in the in the show are so vastly different mm-hmm. that if you're reading with the subtext it it's there it can't be the same but i'm, I'm gonna watch it anyway call it hate watching call it whatever you will yeah. i still enjoy for the most part the production quality um i, I tried readjusting my tv to watch it again <laughs> and I'm, I'm having i don't want to fuck my tv up because yeah. i like the settings that i have it on yeah. and i don't want to never be able to watch anything again because i <laughs> set it up to watch one episode of game of thrones that i don't like the ending of <laughs> No, no, I, it's for me. It was for me. It's 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 weird because, like, like I said, I, I haven't I haven't gotten into the the books at all. But I've never gotten so hardcore into the series. Like, it's it's always appointment watching in the sense that, like, I make sure to watch it every week. But it's not something I live or die by. Yeah, and I think I think I think I'm in that good area where I don't I can be offended by how simple it's gotten, but I'm not like devastated and I'm, I'm fine being there yeah i'm i feel for those of you who've made the, who had the earlier investment that have been harmed by what are going to be all these reaction bit idiots that claim to be fans i'm not going to say i'm devastated by it but there's a part of my soul that really hurts for the people who watch it and think this is awesome knowing what they could have experienced yeah if George had still been part of the writing team and kept things along the lines of what he wanted. Yeah. So yeah, for for anyone listening to this, give give the books a shot. If nothing else, it is a very different experience from the show and it's worth having both watch the show for the entertainment value. There's some great acting. I'm I'm going to miss the, uh, I think Alfie Allen is one of the best actors to come out of this show. Yeah. He's great. It sucks that the two weakest actors are the two pivotal characters at this point. But you, you can't know that when you're casting these people yeah. eight years ago, nine True. years ago. Yeah, that, that, that's it. I'll watch it. We want to do a recap after the oh, season's definitely, over? definitely. Cool. Well, this It'll is our be cool, Like I said, because, because we're, we're two, not opposed, but two completely different viewpoints. I'm show only and you're both. Yeah. Cool. Well, we'll, we'll be back for, for better or for worse in a few weeks to talk about the the finality of the, finale yeah. of Game of Thrones, yeah. but in the meantime, watch it, enjoy it, don't <laughs> laugh. Some I, <laughs> sure, whatever. And <laughs> that's, we'll, <laughs> that's it in a nutshell, right? Yeah. Sure, whatever. <laughs> HBO only spends like millions of dollars on an episode, but you you browbeaten everybody to the point where it's just like just, just finish, please. Seriously, go back and watch Helm's Deep. That, that is truly. How you do a siege at night, and it, it is still a masterclass. It might be almost 20 years old at this point, but I, I'm beginning to doubt whether or not it will ever be beat. So, cool. Thanks for listening. Yep. Yep. <laughs>